Hi guys, my name is Jon from Restoration.bike and in this video I'm going to delve into a number of reasons for buying a full carbon saddle. I got my hands on a gorgeous lightweight full carbon saddle and the first obvious question you want to have answered is whether or not it's worth investing such a very in such a very expensive product. In my case, we're talking about the AX Lightness Phoenix saddle. It's a full carbon saddle weighing 60 grams, which makes it one of the lightest sandals in the world, uh, basically. I ch the AX Lightning Phoenix is their most expensive saddle and originally retails for 300 euros or about $360. I got it for 75 euros. So I consider myself very lucky. I bought this saddle mainly because of the bling factor and I judged whether it was worth taking the risk of buying something that could turn out to be totally unusable and decided to go for it. I read a review where the writer said that the obvious notion of having a carbon saddle because of the clearly visible carbon weave was a tad too much bling for his taste. I disagree and I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a thing of beauty. And if you don't know any better, you might believe it's nothing but a cheap piece of hard plastic. But the fact that a mere 60 grams can hold an adult male body is an extraordinary feat of human engineering. So no, I don't need this saddle, but that's not the point. My old Sala Italia OCR Compact Road Saddle weighed in at a respectable 326 grams and the Eggs Lightness Phoenix full carbon saddle weighs 60 grams. That's more than five times lighter for a total weight reduction of 266 grams. That's a lot and is a significant step you can make when you're reducing weight in all of the components with the goal of shaving kilos of your bicycle. But now that I got it, how does it stack up against the one it's going to replace? And before I answer that question, I want you to watch a clip from the following movie from a professional bike fitter. Saddle problems are less subjective than they're made out to be. We used to do saddle fitting in here. It's a waste of time. You know, even with a pressure mapping system, which I have, it's complete and utter waste of time because I found most of the time you'd end up, you'd get someone who would come in, saddle's 30 mil too high, the bike's too big, they've got no support in the shoes, the shoes don't fit them. All of these things have massive implications in, in the saddle. Lance Armstrong stated it's not about the bike. If you believe the person in the video, you can safely say with respect to saddle comfort, it's not about the saddle. And with that out of the way, I generally prefer a hard saddle so soft padding does not move into areas I don't want it to perform pressure. And for a lot of people, this seems counterintuitive, resulting in a question like, you know, isn't such a hard saddle uncomfortable? And it doesn't get any harder than full carbon saddles. This Phoenix full carbon saddle is classically shaped without any center cutout. Whereas the general trend is towards saddle with cutouts. I now firmly believe that a cutout will not be the defining factor in saddle comfort. So with all that out of the way, the big question is, is it more comfortable than my old saddle? I would like to think so, especially because it needs to be better because of the price. But the AX Lightning Phoenix is a very different saddle from the OCR. Besides the obvious price difference, the main characteristic of a full carbon saddle is that it has no padding that'll keep you in place. And it means that your bike and saddle needs to be set up correctly, or you will start moving around excessively and putting tape on top of this saddle kind of defeats the purpose of using it. Bike fitters would say the saddle locks you into place. And like every carbon product, this saddle is very strong, but fragile. It's more apt to crack and or break than no full carbon saddles. Managing the saddle delicately when moving your bike while not riding is simply quite a nuisance. You can't move your bike by lifting the back of the saddle. And only with this saddle do you realize how much you use that type of movement. It's also very common to lean your bike against something by using the saddle. You can't do that anymore either unless you're willing to scratch and damage your very expensive saddle. And I already had a fixed seat post clamp instead of a quick release. And that's a simple but effective method of preventing someone from walking away with both the saddle and seat post. And these two parts could possibly represent hundreds of euros. 
I didn't, but if you buy such an expensive saddle, I certainly hope you like it. Brands like Schmolka offer the option to test ride a purchased saddle with basically, which basically you can send it back use and get a full refund. But even with such a guarantee, it's not the same thing as being able to really test ride several saddles but it is an option you might want to take into consideration when you are looking for a full carbon saddle. And make sure your current seat post is compatible with the rails of your full carbon saddle. The rails of my AX Lightning Phoenix is eight millimeters. That means I need a seat post with a clamp that is compatible with eight millimeter rails. Only after the fact that I found out the Cane Creek Isilk seat post was only compatible with standard seven millimeter rails so that wraps up this video about full carbon saddles i hope you like it uh, if you have a question leave it in the comments below and i hope to see you with the next video bye for now